God glory. Give him glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Please welcome our... Before I do that, please turn your cell phones off at this time. And let's welcome our youth pastor, Mr. Chris Felix. Come on. Amen. Amen. Give me a second. Thank you, Lord. Uh, my name is Christopher Felix. First, I just want to honor God, and I want to honor Bishop and Prophetess. I want to honor Ms. Nash's family that came to be with us today to celebrate Ms. Nash's life. Amen. And I want to honor Ms. Nash and her sacrifice for literally giving her life to Jesus. Uh, real quick, on Thursday, on Thursday night during praise and worship, Bishop confirmed this later on in service. He said, because Miss Nash died in Christ, she's alive in Christ. And so during praise and worship, the presence dropped on me and I felt the Lord's presence. And because Miss Nash is with the Lord and in Christ, I felt her presence and I saw her face. And while I was dancing and she was smiling just as beautiful and big as she always grinned. And all I could say I, I couldn't even put the words together what I wanted to say to her at that moment but all that came out was I love you and that right there doesn't scratch the surface of how I feel about Miss Nash beautiful angelic, humble gracious, gracious gentle strong and courageous these are just a few words a few qualities that don't even begin to, to describe Miss Nash she was a mentor and a mother to me but most importantly, she was a true woman of God. Yes. Intercessor, praise and worship dance leader, servant of the almighty God in so many ways. Yes. I don't have enough time to express the love and, love and honor I have for Miss Nash, but this woman was so contagious with her loving spirit, yes. sprinkled with elegance and a sense of humor. Yes. She truly influenced my life and was truly another mother to me. Yes. When I first came to Genesis, you know, I was still in the world, and she reached out to me. And she said, Christopher, uh, I need somebody for the program. And I was like, Miss Nash, I don't want to do the program. And she was like, yes, I know that, Christopher, but I, I see it on you. You need to be in this. And so after fighting it, any, any of you that know Miss Nash, you can't say no to Miss Nash. So, but in that, she saved my life through Christ, because out of that, it's probably something that I would have never imagined. Now I'm on my way to become, becoming a pastor and a man of God. And looking back now, it, was, it started at that one point when she reached out to me to be in the program. She was a true, fierce warrior who never gave up and never looked back. Her love and faith in God was unstoppable and unmatched. She was unique and special in countless ways and will always be a part of my life and the ministry. Even in, her, even in her last days, she stood on the rock, which is Jesus Christ and his word. No matter what she went through, she still held on to her, her calling. The last time I saw her was one of the most special moments of my life. It was on her birthday. And me and Shante went to go see her, went to go bless her. And we, me and Shante prayed for her. And this woman, when we said amen, we finished praying for her. She turned around and started praying for us. I just can't. You can't put words on that. I said, look at the woman of God. She's fighting for her life and she's still praying for others. What are we doing? We need to be like that. She was, oh my goodness. We can't even understand the seriousness of the situation where she's trying to show us. I said, look at the strength. In her last days, she came to church. She paid her tithe. She prayed for others. If we can take anything away from Miss Nash's time with us is that she loved us and her family with everything in her. And that she want, all she wanted was for us to serve God until the end and complete the mission and bring the heaven here. That's what Miss Nash's life was all about. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. Open my 
sister, Adrian Roundtree. Well, good morning, church family. Bishop and, and Prophetess Cookie, who um, stood on the ministry of, of dance and worship. They always gave us an opportunity to express ourselves and our love for Christ through the dance and ministry. I hope that you were blessed today during uh, the first part of our service, which is honoring God. We always start with prayer, and we always praise, and we always worship, because in the praise and worship, we shake off the heaviness. We shake off the burden, and in the worship, we come closer to him. He's drawing us closer. He calls us by name, and he pours out his presence upon us, and that is what Miss Nash has done for us on this team. She's cut a pattern of worship and praise into our lives. If it was a daily, um, weekly service as Sunday or on a Wednesday or on a Thursday, if we were in a park or if we were on a, a beachfront or if we were in a convalescent home or if we were just in the sometimes just in a store or in LA Miss Nash cut that that pattern into our lives to to draw us closer to him her life was a living sacrifice she was the the best example um, recently somebody asked me they're like when did you meet Miss Nash and I was like I don't I don't know exactly the time or the date when I met Miss Nash but I met her along the way that I walked with her I got to continue to meet her. I got to continue to meet her in a deeper way. And as I met her in a deeper way, she continued to usher me into his presence and into his glory. She never took the credit to herself. Miss Nash never wanted to be in the front. She never wanted to hold the mic. She always wanted to push us closer to him, draw the gifts out of, out of us and give it to him. There was never a time when you got to sit back. I would call and go, I'm tired, or I'm this, or I'm that, or whatever was going on. But Bishop's vision is to touch the untouchable and to reach the unreachable. And she's poured that into us. And so when times when we were untouchable as a dance team, or if we went out and we were ministering to people who were untouchable, she always had an avenue, which was the grace of dance, which was the expression of dance and worship to manifest his presence before us to demonstrate heaven here on earth. Heaven is not so far away. It's closer than we ever could believe or think or imagine. If you open yourself to believe, she's right there with you. She'll always continue to talk to us. You'll always continue to feel her. And it's her and it's the presence of God. It's really the Holy Spirit. And I invite you to take part of that. Take part of that. Um, this, the other part that Miss Nash really touched us was with the women. She, she always prepared herself through sacrifice of, of fasting and in prayer. She always wanted to make sure that when the women had a time to advance in the Lord, we never called it a retreat because we don't go back. We're soldiers. We always move forward. We always continue to advance. So during our time of advancement, she would sacrifice for months of, of fasting and prayer and making sure that we were dedicating our lives to the Lord. Miss Nash is forever with us. She is so present. She wasn't was. She is and is to come. Just like the Holy Spirit. She was and is to come. We can continue to live our lives um, as she has shown us and as she has demonstrated. So I thank you all for coming. I'm going to bring up our wonderful prophetess. Please rise to your feet as we honor the woman of God. her feet are planted firm on this on this ground and her head is in the heavens. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. We just give God praise. This is a day to celebrate. Amen. And you probably wondered why I'm dressed the way I'm dressed today, but this was a dress that Miss Nash she, had a, she was a lady of many things. She had so many gifts and talent that she had brought to this ministry and I was so privileged and honored to be a part of, of what God had given us, a special gift. And this dress probably at least 16 or 17 years old and I kept saying I should give this away. I need to give this dress away. And this is my first time wearing this dress, but it's for you today, Miss Nash. And I hope you enjoy. She always dressed us well. Amen. I thought I said that. I'm sorry. 
She gave me this dress. She always dresses. I'm sorry. Oh, I need to slow down. Hallelujah. We just give God praise. Well, there's so many things I can say today because it's been many years, but we have so many people here I want to speak for today that are not able to get up and say these words, but we know they are all in your heart and that you've been a part of this ministry and you've been blessed by a special gift. Well, first of all, the scripture that I believe that's so fitting to Ms. Nash, it says, Matthew 5, 8, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. Last night, there was an experience. I was across the street from her house last night, and there was a bright light came down from heaven. A bright light. It was so beautiful. And I, only thing I can think of, and the only thing I felt was the presence of Miss Nash. God said in the last days, he'll show us signs and wonders in heaven. And there's so many of us wondering and don't understand. But God demonstrated his power to me last night to bring to you. And as we were standing there and we was gazing in the sky, and it was a Boy Scout event, but I think it was a God event. Because the event name was the Arrow of Light. And this light came down from heaven. And the Bible say that the angels will ascend and descend. And Miss Nash to me is one of God's angels. And she descend and she ascend to heaven. And as that light as she ascend back into heaven, it came smaller and smaller, but on the side was a beautiful blue cloud. Mm -hmm. Now this is above a lot of people. It probably freaked you out because a lot of people last night that was freaking out. But for me, it said when, when, when um, Jesus came, a, a dove, a sin. Mm -hmm. right. And so a lot of things that God showed us as his witness that a lot of people won't understand. But he said, those who love me and know me, they would, he, he's speaking to us. So I received that as God was speaking to us. And it go along with what else, all the rest that I want to say. It says, um, and as it sent back into heaven, and Crystal Mother was there and her sister, and they were sitting beside me. And I don't know how much they believe, but I know they believe there's a heaven and there's a God. And so I said to them, I said, could this be Miss Nash? You know, she lived right across the street, speaking to us. Now, don't, I know it sounds spooky, but it's okay, just bear with me. And as she, she as it, it's descent back in heaven, it was just an angel to me. It was a long line, it was no longer a round circle, it was just straight. And I said, thank you, Kathy. Thank you for giving us that peace and that joy that you always have shown us. And that go along with when I first met her, there were things she said to me that she probably said to you different things in each and every one of us. But, you know, God showed me that gift of her dancing. And she had this special grace about her. And I said, you know, you're so beautiful, Kathy. You're just so beautiful to me. I just love your spirit, your beautiful inside and out. And she did say that she wanted to be a movie star. Oh. And I was like, oh, no wonder all this beauty. God put it in her heart from birth to be beautiful inside and out. So today, Kathy, we are celebrating. We are, this is our Emmy and this is our Grammy Award for you today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, the pure in heart shall see God for this celebration of a beautiful woman today she so much fill our heart with joy with love but most of all she was full of compassion if there was a name or title that I would give Kathy it would be a woman of compassion she always loved uh, throughout our plays and our program and our production 
and we can see the talent as the talent keep coming up. It's a product of her love and giving and not being selfish and not holding back. And she always had a willing heart. And that's a, a precious gift to have and to value. You know, they have this song, when I get to heaven, I'm going to walk around heaven all day. But guess what? Kathy not walking around heaven today. She's dancing around heaven today. Did you hear me? Kathy, we know that you're dancing around heaven today. And that so bless us. And that you'll forever be in our heart. And as I was praying and I wanted to say a few things because I know so many people have so many things they can say and would like to say today. But due to time and the building, but the, it's not always going to be this way. So we apologize Amen. for that. Okay, but it says, I'm not a poet, but God gave me a, 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 a poem for Kathy. Amen. And it's for you. He said, remember me. Remember my smile. And you heard that earlier from Christopher. Remember my touch. Remember my joy. Please don't cry for me. I'm with my father now. No more pain, no more sorrow. I'm dancing with the angels. And that's what God showed me last night. I'm free. When you think of me or whenever you see a butterfly, think of me. I'm free. I'm free. God bless you. We love you. That's a hard person to follow. Um, well, we're just really blessed that Kathy's family is here to honor her with us. It's a blessing to have all of you with us. And as you saw through the praise and through the worship, that was your mother, that was your sister, that was your grandma. That was her. You know, and that's how we really want to honor her is through the dance and through the music because that is who she was. But I knew another side of Kathy. When Kathy came to us, she already was a prayer warrior. She was already a woman of prayer and fasting. And she came and for about 15 years, maybe a little over 15 years, we started a core group of women intercessors in this house. And she was a part of that. And so really what I say is, be, is on behalf of the bishop and the prophetess and the intercessory core group and really the church family and her immediate family. Because Kathy was a prayer warrior. She was an intercessor. She believed in prayer. She believed in God's word. And through the years of praying with her, when you pray with somebody, you get to know their heart and their spirit. And her heart cry was her family. Her heart cry and prayers and fasting were for her children and her children's children. Because that is what she desires and that's what she wants. And I have to tell you, every, you know, everybody has different experiences in the spirit. And I also had a couple experiences. The first one was the night, the day that Kathy passed and went to heaven. I was sitting at the edge of my bed and I started crying and I heard her she said Diana don't cry she said I'm so happy I was like oh wow why well, I stopped crying so you know that was the first time then when the intercessors got together um, at her home I actually saw we were praying with Kathy that was the last time as a team we prayed together and when we were together, I saw the angelic host. And I saw them so excited that Kathy was coming. There was family members, there were friends, there were people from her work that she prayed for before they left and transitioned to heaven. They were all excited that she was coming. And they were waiting for her. I said, wow! That's what all of us want.
want. When we transition, we want a party of people waiting for us because we touched their lives, because we made a difference. Ms. Nash made a difference. She made a difference with her life, with her witness, with her prayers, with her warfare and dancing. She made a difference. So this dance that I'm going to do is for Miss Nash. And the name of this dance is called Prayer Warrior. And there's no other words I need to say other than you'll see it in the dance. God bless you.
Miss Kathy. And she's still doing that today. Hallelujah. Now we want to, I want to read one of Kathy's favorite scriptures to me. Now, she have many, but this is one. And uh, <clears throat> every time we would do a women retreat or advance, this was one of her favorite um, scriptures. It was in Psalms 30. He said, you have turned my morning, you have turned for me my morning into dancing. So when we go through things in our life, God would change those things for you. And that was Kathy Hart when it came to dancing, that God would turn your morning into joy and into laughter. He said, but you have put off my sackcloth and my clothes and clothed me with the garment of gladness. And she truly demonstrated that. So that's what you have to remember. There's no more sorrow, it's gladness and joy. Amen. So with that, we would like to welcome our next, and that'll be Christina Babin, and she have a song and a dance song. <coughs> Thank you. 
Hallelujah. One night with the king. That was a, one of her specialties. And I would like to say one thing. That's my daughter. We have three children, two sons and a daughter. But when Kathy came, um, she was such a blessing to me as showing a mother to my daughter. Because how many know when mothers, you're trying to teach your daughter sometimes, they think moms don't know. But they'll listen to other mothers. So it was so beautiful. Kathy was such a blessing. I think Christina was like 10. Was you about 10, Christina? I think she was about 10. But at that time, she wanted to wear jeans and pants. And, and I always tried to dress her like a pretty little girl because I was so happy to have a little girl. But Kathy was the perfect role model. She would take these young girls to L.A. and take them shopping. And I was like, oh, God, God answered my prayer. So this scripture I thought was fitting. It's Titus, and you heard it from Adrian. Um, Titus chapter 2, it says in chapter 3, it said the older women, likewise, that they would have reverence in behavior and not, not slanderers, not giving in to much wine, rather teachers of good things. And that's what Kathy did. She taught our young kids the good things of life. Amen. So we were so blessed and honored for her sacrifice and her dedication to spend time and patience. That's something I know why she named her daughter Patient, because Kathy had a lot of patience. Patient I didn't have. So I thank God for that gift. Like I said, she gave, she had so much, she brought me so much joy, and she was such a blessing to me as a pastor. Amen. God bless you. Now we'll welcome Pastor Charles. This is her brother-in-law. God bless him. They've been such a blessing to us throughout this time. And we so appreciate him and the family. Again, we welcome and bless and thank God for Kathy and such a lovely family. We really got to know the blessing that she has lived. She has demonstrated and through her family, they have demonstrated her love. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Amen. Charles. First of all, I knew Kathy before I met my wife. I knew Kathy much, much, many years before I knew uh, my wife. We used to go to a place called Sportsman Park. Those who know about LA, Sportsman Park is off of Century and Western. They used to have things called sock hops. You know, we dance and we dance in our socks. And, well, I met Kathy and a good friend of mine that I went to school with there, and, and I never met, I had met, not met Gwen, but I saw my my future wife, at a distance. She came up, she was a little girl. <laughs> I considered her a little girl, but I remembered her face. I told her that today, I said, I remember you, you, you look much younger, because I'm, I'm four years older than her, but I remember seeing her. But through the years, we would go to different places. I'd drive her and a friend, uh, Linda, to what we call the skating rink in, on Western and, and Sunset. You remember that? Remember, Y'all remember that? Okay, way back then. And we would, I'd take them there and I'd pick them up and take them home. But we, we, my wife and I, we were sitting in the living room with Kathy and her then husband, uh, my friend, who I used to blow ride with, her husband, Arlie Nash. Yeah, I had a 64 Chevy and he had a 64 Chevy. It's low ride a lot. But um, we were sitting in the, in the living room and we were talking to, my wife and I were talking to Kathy about the Lord. And, I knew she was raised Catholic like my wife was raised Catholic, and I had led my wife to Christ much before Kathy, but uh, I shared some things with Kathy, and her heart was just open. She, she wanted to hear more, and she kept talking. And got to the place where she said, well, I want, I, I want what you all have. I said, Gwen, you can take it from here. And I brought her on into the family. Uh, that was back in 1976. Watched Kathy grow over the years. She grew. She had a passion for the Lord. I told my wife this morning, Kathy did not have a mean bone in her body. She, she never, I've never seen her get angry. She, if she got angry with her children, I wasn't there. I never saw them spank New York get spankings. I'm sure she did. But she would say, you all are wrong. Why do you all do that? She would say things like that. Not, I'm going to beat you up. No, never. Never a mean bone. 
it was her spirit. She was very gentle. Very gentle person. And there was a peace about Kathy, always a peace about her. We were, uh, my wife and I were reminiscing. And I, I, call, I remember Kathy was, she was, this was right before the end. We brought the kids in, her grandchildren, and patients, you were on your way back from doing something with the car, but we had to, your, your children were all around, and we're standing holding hands. And she, before she breathed her last, I said, we're going to pray, so we prayed. Right there, we prayed. Kathy, mm, when she left, the room was just filled. You could just feel her presence. She, the room was filled with her presence, and all her children, all your grandchildren, could, all your children, patients could do was just weep. They could, they, they wept. But I was saying, this is only the beginning. Yeah. This is the beginning. Because yeah. I know that she's in the presence of God. Yeah. She's, I know where she is. That's how she lived. She lived her life as if it was her last day. She lived every day. She didn't waste any moments, mess around, doing a lot of things that, that maybe people said, well, you know, I have some time. She said, no, I don't have any time. She, two weeks ago, my wife and I went to New York to see our, our children. And before she, we left to go see our children, Kathy led her baby sister to Christ. Now this is on her laying down. As low as she was, she was able to make sure the gospel came forth. Yeah. To talk to her sister about Jesus. That's a soul winner. Hallelujah. That's a soul winner. That's the kind of life Kathy lived every single day. And I knew her. I, I've known Kathy for years. I was about 16 when I met her. But Kathy, when she came to know the Lord, she, she owned every, everything God put in her. She used for his glory. Yeah, Hallelujah. Right. Robert, you know that. Yeah. That's, your, that's your mama. Yeah. Woo. Saying, that who can find a virtuous woman? Yeah. Her worth is far, far above yes. rubies. Yes. Things of value that we treasure. Yes. The heart of a husband safely trusts her. And I talked to our lead the other day. He said, you know, Charles, um, we didn't make it, but he said, Kathy was my wife. That's, that's my wife. He said, I know, I know. I, that, that's the one God chose for me. This is the, came out of his heart. Wow. He knew, he knew. He had, some, he had a few challenges, but he knew that was the one. That yeah. You're not going to find anymore. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Find somebody like Kathy. Yeah. As I look back at Kathy and looking at the scripture, what the scripture says, for we know in, we know, now we see through a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. Yeah. Kathy is already in the then. Yeah. I want y'all to see this. She's already in the then. When I, what I mean by that is, she is in God's presence right. right now. So the things that we're wondering about, she already knows. Let me say that again. The things that we think that we're trying to, to figure and constantly, what does that mean? She already knows. Because she is in the then. Face to face. Then she knows it all. And we're all going to have to take that journey one day. That's right. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, the judgment. We're going to be all standing before his throne one day. Receive rewards. Or some may be that they're grieving because of the things that they could have done. That you could have been doing. That you should be doing now. Don't wait until it. Don't wait until, 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 until you do things. And, you, and you don't wait until... Things get so tired, so hard, where you can't do anything. Right. Why you have your energy? I saw these them up here dancing. Right. I want to get dance with them. Hallelujah! You know, sixty-six years old, and I can still jump. I can still dance. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory be to Jesus. God is in that then. Years ago, and I'm gonna close with this. I, I learned something as a young. Minister as a young, I wasn't even a minister then. I was just saved and knew the Lord. Leading people to Christ. I guess I was a minister. I was leading folks to Christ. But my daughter came into me one day. I was laying in bed in Compton. We bought our first house in Compton. All right. 
my wife and I were sitting there talking, and my daughter, Jessica, ran in. Daddy, Daddy, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Daddy, I'm hurting all over. And I, I, I didn't know a lot about words, but I learned about words after that. I said, well, whatever's on you, it can come, come on me. Now, I said that un unknowing what I was saying. Not knowing what words mean then, learning about words. And she said, thank you, Dad, and she ran out. I said, oh, she's doing better. And that thing gripped me. It gripped, I couldn't move. I said, honey, get it off me. It was on me. I couldn't move. Young people, learn the power of words. If you know Jesus, and you speak it as an authority of God, when you say something, life and death are in the power, in the direction of the speech. I learned then, you can't just say anything. I said, Lord, I sure would love to take this, okay? He said, I already took it. And he said, she, she, he said, don't even think about it, Charles. I said, but Lord, she's going, she's suffering. He said, that's her cross? I've already bore more of it, most of it. This is what he told me. I've already borne most of it. He said, but I left a little bit for her to bear. That was her cross, and we all have our cross that we are even bearing now, or one day we're going to bear. She's ready to receive her rewards. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. My sister, Kathy Nash. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Johnny, Johnny, where's Josh? There he is. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be here. Give God a hand, praise. Give God a hand, praise. I'll definitely keep it short as, as I can. Um, I just, uh, just, I just remember times I was telling um, patients uh, last week um, when we came to visit. Uh, just times of being at their house in Long Beach. How we used to always, you know, walk over there from our house in Compton. You know, she lived right on the borderline of Compton and Long Beach, like right at the edge and right by Compton College. And we used to always walk over there and. You know, I just can remember her always being happy, um, always, you know, arts and crafts, keeping us busy, keeping us motivated. I mean, I, I remember my sister, <laughs> she was making some earrings. Auntie Kathy had her like making earrings for my mom. We made some earrings for my mom. And I was just like, wow, like she was so gifted, like <clears throat> the, other, the young lady said earlier. And it's just, it's just, it's just been a, you know, a journey coming from last week to now uh, for myself and uh, my wife and I and just, you know, there's there's been, you know, just a change. I, I can tell God is, he's definitely, uh, seems like he's moving faster. Maybe that's just me getting older, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like he's doing, you know, I feel like he's doing something else, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's just different, you know, and to sum it up. But um, I wanted to sing one song and, you know, uh, just to, uh, to usher in the presence of God and, you um, I really appreciate the um, choreography dance. Uh, that brought back memories. Um, I'm sure a lot of my uh, cousins <laughs> can remember, you know, being in our house in Compton, you know, Auntie Kathy cut the little radio on and we're, we're spinning. And we're doing the, you know, we're doing, we, I was looking like, man, that's me right there. I, I remember that, you know. I was like, let me, let me get my, wait a minute, let me take my, I was like, let me jump right in, you know. Like, like jumping in the jump rope, I was like, mm. But okay, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Should my, should my heart feel lonely and long for, for heaven and home? But when Jesus is my portion.
watch is over me. So why, so why should I feel discouraged? And why should my shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely? And long for heaven and home, but we. right now is looking looking down I just believe that I just believe that I believe that God gives us that beautiful opportunity once we leave this earth realm to participate and to see all of the results all the fruit of all the prayers I just believe that praise God and she's here and I know she's smiling and as she left on uh, Monday about 2 15 and you know, just breathed her last. The only thing I could do as she breathed her last was look up. I tell everybody, that's where she is. She's not here. Not in this earth realm. She was up dancing with the angels. Dancing with the angels. Amen. And I praise God. You know, the joy is just so strong, so strong. And many people have said, oh, you know, it's going to be a time for you to grieve. And it's going to be a time. But I don't. I don't see that yeah. even coming because yeah. we share because if you know that you have done all that you know to do yeah. as a result of the Lord's telling you in obedience, yeah. then there's joy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen, Charlotte. There's joy. There's joy. And so family, I just, you know, just want to encourage you. My sister, we had so many fun. My husband said he never saw her fight, but... She beat me up a couple of times. So, <laughs> but we became best, best friends, and there were always special projects and fun things that we did. And, and I remember my sister, you know, once I got up to the age where I was accepted in that, in that group, in her, in her group area, I really had fun. I remember 
this one time um, we had gone to, uh, well she had gone, she was old enough to go to a party and she had to be home by 10 o'clock. So me and mama went to go pick her up and you know, when I got into the party, she saw me, but she was like, act like you don't see me. So she was dancing. And so she told, finally told me, start dancing with somebody. And so okay, so I was dancing with, you know, in there. Well, of course, lo and behold, we turned around. There's mama coming in the door. So. But after that, I was accepted. I was accepted in the group, and I could go to party. Sometimes she'd invite me to go, because I was a big girl. But we all, there was always something that we were doing. As we raised our kids, she raised my kids. You know, my kids, you know, they call, everybody called her Auntie Kathy. All the family, if you hear anybody, our God, children, everybody, Auntie Kathy. And we always had... Uh, a plan that we were cooking up to encourage our kids to taste a little bit more than just, you know, the little Compton Watts upbringing. We always had a, had a plan. And one plan that we had, we were looking at some brochures and we said, wow, why don't we take the kids on a houseboat experience? So we said, okay, you know, here we are, we know, we got all these kids, and so all the kids, they remember going on the houseboat. I don't know if Johnny, you were here yet, but um, all these little, us, us little two little black families, we got our little kids together, and you know, on this houseboating experience, my husband and R.D., they were the fishermen, and it was a disaster, but that's okay. <laughs> And some people run off and stirred our boat over. The kids fell out of the out of the bunk beds. It was terrible. <laughs> but every vacation or what have you, you know, we orchestrated. Kathy, of course, at the helm, planning the whole trip. We didn't care, whatever. When well, y'all the only little chocolate drops on didn't matter. Wherever we went, you know, Kathy said, "Let's go do it." Okay, let's we'll, we'll go. And you know, how are we gonna pay for it? I don't know. So the kids, they used to think that, you know, during the summertime, we go on the, you know, we go to the beach. Oh, we love, Mama loves going to the beach. She didn't know we were going canning. We were picking up cans and bottles to pay for our trip on the houseboat. So my sister was always full of creativity and fun and joy and would give her last, last, last. She never wanted to see anything or anybody hurt, no pain. And that, that's the joy that I have. Every time I would think about her, I would I always think about the good things, the fun things. There were times, the, of course, the sorrow, you know, and we were little, and I'd climb into bed with her, and we'd just cry together, and, you know, I mean, but there was always a place of, it's going to be all right. It's going to work out okay. And that was the legacy in her life, you know. And so with the tears cry, but it's gonna be okay. It's gonna work out. God has already finished the work. And as Kathy, she just, she, I'm just mad because she left first. You know, but that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna occupy, we're gonna do what God has called us to do. Some of the work that Hey, it's yet to be finished and the fun is yet to be had and the joy is yet to come. It's coming. It's on its way. I want to say thank you so much to you, Genesis, the King's Church, church family. You all have been an extension of us. And when Kathy moved down all these miles to Vista and Oceanside area, and I was like, that's not right. But you all embraced her. And became yeah. her family yeah. Yeah. and reached right. out and, and just embraced us as we one by one yeah. <laughs> came on. We, we, we forgive you for taking it. <laughs> In fact, now you got us forever. Just for that. <laughs> but um, we have the family we say thank you. We love you so much. Um, there's a service some of you know on Tuesday. Please, if you're available over at Sunrise where she worked, they want to pour their love out to her. You are welcome. Uh, there's another service if you're in the Inglewood area on the 20th um, at uh, the Inglewood Park Cemetery. Yes, on the, coming in on the Florence side, 10 o'clock on the 20th. Uh, you're welcome to come and share there with us as we send her on home. And then at St. Eugene's, they're going to have an after a repast. Some of you know St. Eugene's over there. Um, you know, just let me know and I'll make sure you have the information. 
And so again, God bless you on behalf of our family, of the Nashes, the Batis, the uh, everybody that's here, uh, patience. God bless you. You all have been a support. And we just want to know you love you. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Love you.